Greetings everybody, this is Sliced Lime and I'm here with an update to the tutorial I did a couple of days ago about fill clocks and their delay that is incurred by eliminating something off of a fill clock. So a viewer of mine called Gary Brano was helpful enough to send in a comment and explain some inaccuracies in that tutorial and he also sent in a bit of a mystery. So I did a live stream earlier today where I sort of went about figuring out what exactly is going on when you execute things and why this mystery was occurring that he sent to me. So let me show you what this is all about. We have this fill clock here. There's a bunch of stuff on it right now, but the important part is this block. And it's the same that we had last time. It's when score of a player reaches 10. And by the way, as he pointed out as well, which is entirely correct, you're better off doing at P here because you only want this to be executed once. Uh, or you can have C equals one in here, but uh, let's go with that P. It's a better way. When my score hits 10 in this world, we're going to execute uh, something off of an armor stand called ticker standing over there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill 12 redstone blocks and those are this line here. I've moved it over to have it in the same chunks for a test But what that does pretty much is it runs this command Which is another execute so um, We're checking if my score is still 10 which is pretty much saying is there a delay of a tick or not? And then we're doing a tell raw that's telling the score to the chat now, what happens with this is really, really weird. In my last tutorial, I said that doing this fill incurs a one tick delay. That is not actually always the case, which Gary Brano pointed out in this configuration that I had before, that was actually correct. Because we had the fills at the start of the fill clock, that led to uh, the situation I described. But there is a simple solution to that, and that is to move the fill commands to the end of the clock. So I've moved them over here. My fill clock is now being driven by the last two blocks to execute. A fill is always filled from the low coordinate to the high coordinate. So I'm looking down the negative Z axis here. These two blocks are going to execute last of all the blocks around this, this fill clock. And that means that uh, the whole thing now suddenly works. Uh, the problem, however, if I do uh, scoreboard players resets slice line uh, ticks, now you can see my score was 10 and it's executed properly. The thing though is if we do that a couple of times is we get different scores. So what he discovered uh, by random chance here is that there's a problem with the tell raw command. Uh, but let's leave that for now and just go through exactly what's going on when Minecraft updates a fill clock and fills driven off of that fill clock. So in order to understand what's going on here, we're going to have to talk about what incurs delays and what doesn't. As far as I can understand, when Minecraft is executing the command blocks around this fill clock, it's going to execute them from this direction over there, with the X blocks first and then the Y blocks and then finally the Z blocks. That doesn't really matter right now because I've laid out, laid out the important blocks of this one by one on the Z axis. So. This block is going to execute first. It's just going to add a score to the scoreboard. Uh, this one is going to execute next. And it's going to execute a fill, potentially. But the interesting tick here is when we have a score of 10. So let's assume that's the case. We're then going to execute a fill. Fill all of these blocks with redstone blocks. And here's where something interesting happens. If this block already has a tile tick scheduled for it for the next tick, it's going to transfer that onto this line of redstone, which means that all of these will also execute next tick. If it doesn't, then all of these are going to be scheduled to execute on this tick later in this tick. What's going to happen then is that it's going to keep executing these commands. So it's going to execute this block and all the way back over here then it's going to execute all of these blocks. And you can actually test it out, and that's what I've done with these blocks. So we have a bunch of set blocks here, and it's a set block with a lapis block, and then here we have a set block with a redstone block in the same sit same position above my head. And if we, again, reset my tick score, we can see that I get a redstone block in my over my head, 
which means that this lapis block uh, set block is happening before this redstone block set block. So the redstone block is what ends up remaining. So the order of execution is anything that is scheduled first, then anything that happens because of what was already happening. And if we at some point during that scheduled new updates for next tick for all of these, which happens if you update this command block with a fail that affects this command block, then everything that happens from on all of those blocks touched by that fail is going to happen next tick. And all of that is done that way to prevent you from hanging in the game in an infinite loop. That's pretty involved deeply. That's as far as I understand it, uh, how things work. The good news though is as long as you stick your fills onto the end of the fill clock, then pretty much things are going to happen the same tick. So out of two very important updates for this video, one is stick your fill commands on the end of your fill clocks and you will not have a one tick delay. So that's good to know. The second thing is about the tell raw. So as you can see here, when I run this, the score is pretty much random depending on what it says, but the score must be 10 when this command executes because otherwise it doesn't do the tell raw at all. So every single time this command decides that we should do a tell raw, every single time that happens, the score is 10. However, the output is 10 or 11 randomly. And as far as I can tell, that is because this whole thing, this whole data tag that gets sent down with the tell raw command, that thing is not resolved. So it's going to be sent over just as it's written here from the server to the client. Now the commands are executing on the server and it's going to send this little data chunk down to the clients and they are going to look up what the score of at p is in this tick subjective. Now, because of some random factor in the network transfer, even if it's happening in single player, that sometimes comes out as 10 and sometimes comes out as 11. What that means is you can't trust the score output of your Telros, which sounds dramatic, but all it really means is that the score displayed in your Telros might be updated later than when you trigger the Telros. So it's only ever important if you're displaying a score that changes very close to when you're doing the Telros. If that's the case, and you have to display a correct score, then what I would suggest that you do is that you copy the value of the score into another scoreboard, wait a few ticks, and then do the tell raw. And that way you're pretty much certain to get the correct output. And the reason you can't just do a copy is that if you copy the value and then do the tell raw immediately, then, well, how do you know that the copy of the value has reached the client in time? So the tell raw might potentially execute before that. You don't know kind of anything about the order of updates on this. And I haven't dug into the code and I won't. And it doesn't really matter. All you have to really know is that you can't trust it to become the same result always. So those are the two things. And uh, thank you very much to Gary Brana for pointing out this inconsistency and sending me this mystery. It was a fun little thing to investigate. And that is all for today. Thank you very much. My name is Sly Slime and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.